So I've just arrived here in Korea about to pick up my uh, luggage and then we're gonna take the train into Seoul. My first time in Korea, my one of my first time solo traveling in a long time. So I'm a little bit uh, nervous actually. I don't solo travel that much alone anymore. My wife usually helps with the itinerary but I've been lucky enough that she helped me before I left. So I'm very excited to be in a new country. I think this is my 55th country and everything on this trip here in Seoul has been booked using Kluk and I will be providing links to the entire itinerary so you can actually go on the exact same trip as this vlog will be showing you very easily by just booking it through the link. One of the most important things to do when you arrive at any country is to oh, withdraw so the local know. currency, obviously. Now we have money. Okay guys, now that we've taken care of both cash and data, the next thing we're gonna do is go to the Cluck app right here and we have all the things that I've booked for the entire trip here in Korea. I have it under my account and under bookings. So now I'm gonna take the RX Incheon Airport Express train and we're easily just gonna access it. So here, one-way ticket from Seoul Station. Nope, from the airport to Seoul. Yes, that's the one we're gonna do. Boom. I'm pretty sure I'll just have to show that QR and we will be on our way. Let's go! That was so easy. Just typed in the numbers that I found in the Clue app and got my ticket. I was pretty nervous when I, since I'm traveling solo. I don't like finding out all these things by myself. But it's proven out pretty easy. So we're on the way. <laughs> Traveling with Kluk in Korea has been amazing. I love that I don't have to deal with foreign exchange fees. I can book in my native language and they also offer up to 40 currencies. And they usually have regular discounts and promos in the app with prices that you can't find anywhere else. Because usually as I've been traveling around the world, I've had my booking confirmations on emails, on screenshots. For me to have everything in one app accessible at any time has proven to be so nice. And I'm not worried. I'm so excited to experience Korea. Touchdown! Oh my god. Finally made it to South Korea. Checked into the hotel exactly at 3 p.m., which was the check-in time. I left Manila, where I live, pretty early this morning, 4 a.m. I'm feeling kind of tired, but at the same time, I'm pretty excited. You know, I'm here, so I'm full of energy. And um, I think before I get maybe one hour sleep, I will go out and get something to eat, something for lunch, you know? I'm not sure what to get. I'm gonna just wing it today. I'm just gonna explore. But so far, it's been so smooth, you know, from the airport. Just following the signs, really, it was very easy. You just have to like pay attention to the details and make sure that you're exiting where it say you should exit. And I try to make it as detailed as possible for you guys. So if you guys choose to book the same hotel that I did, at least you know how to get exactly here. But I think anywhere in the area of Myeongdong is a good alternative for you guys because it's right in the center of everything. So. Hope you guys are enjoying this vlog so far. We're only getting started. I am so excited and let's keep going. All right guys, it is second day here in Korea and today we're doing something super exciting. We're heading to the DMC, which means the demilitary zone. So it's the border of South and North Korea. Should I be scared to go there? I don't know. I don't think so. It kind of excites me. I've heard so many cool things about it and it's also like one of those things I think you just have to see when you're in South Korea. And I booked all of that through the app as well. And we're gonna head out. Welcome to another day, day two, South Korea. <laughs> Let's go.
All right, so DMC tour starts at 7.30 a.m. in the morning. So I woke up at 6.30. What's so nice is that when you're living in Myeongdong, it seems to be like all the tour operators kind of know that this is where most tourists are living. So they always start tour just from the station, which in my case is seriously just a two minute walk from the hotel. So I'm gonna meet up with my guide there, jump on the bus and get to North Korea. <laughs> You guys can see this is the meeting spot for the beginning of the tour. Pretty easy to spot. There's a lot of people standing there waiting for the different tours. Finally off the bus. After an hour of driving from Seoul, we are here at our first stop of the day, which is this really cool suspension bridge crossing the river. We're getting close to the border of North Korea. And I just want to highlight something. I'm very lucky because once a year, he's in Korea, have this like blossom and it's happening <laughs> for a period of only two weeks which happens to be the time that I am here very very lucky yeah driving here I was just able to witness the vast nature of Korea which I find very fascinating and the trees kind of reminds me of home it's a lot of pine trees everywhere I've snuck away from the group for a little bit <laughs> <laughs> Usually I'm not used to traveling in big groups and it does offer the perfect occasion for me now as a solo traveler in Korea. But I just like to step away for just a little bit, just get a peaceful setting like this, just me, and then try to get some photos. Guys, I have bought myself a real North Korean money bill. Look at that, <laughs> pretty cool. I just thought it was a really cool souvenir to have. So I bought 5,000 North Korean money for 22,000 South Korean money. <laughs> but this is a memory I will keep for the rest of my life. A bill with a dictator on it. I'm right now standing in the Memorial Park of the Korean War. Just baffling how that war, kind of right after World War II, the Korean War started in 1950, over 2.5 million people lost their lives in that war. And it still hasn't been resolved. Like, they still haven't signed a peace treaty. So it's very interesting to learn about these things as we go around. Guys, we have now reached the Dora Observatory. I think the highlight of today's trip. This is where you can see the North Korean flag. You can see their cities. You have large binoculars, stationary binoculars. You can view and they say that if you look really carefully, you should be able to see North Koreans biking on their bicycles in the other city. It's on top of a hill, really beautiful landscape everywhere, large mountains. Like I didn't know Korea had this. And I'm looking at a Korean city that direction and a North Korean city in that direction. So quite spectacular, kind of like a dream moment. Always wanted to be here and, and see it for myself. And the North Koreans have a giant flag pole, 160 meters tall with the North Korean flag on it. So it's like with the naked eye, it's really spectacular because you can see it right there. Guys, the flag of North Korea is right there. And over there is an industrial city. And I've been looking at the flag from these binoculars that they have here. Finally got to see it. So inside the observatory, there's a cafeteria. I just think it's like pretty cool because it's not every day you can have a coffee or eat something like a snack and watch North Korea. We have 25 minutes here now and I'm just gonna take the view in. Enjoy this moment. We've now reached the DMC, the actual endpoint, as close as we're gonna get to North Korea on this trip. And here they have a tunnel, which apparently is 70 meters under the ground. So if you're claustrophobic, then it's not for you, but you know me, I'm gonna go down there, check it out for you guys. Make sure it's worth it. it. Turns out you're not allowed to film in the tunnel or bring your phone down there, so I couldn't shoot anything for you. But on the positive side, there is a kiosk at the entrance and exit, and so they have Korean ice cream there. And it's really heavy to go down. Like, it takes 40 minutes, and it's pretty steep, so we're gonna eat this. It's well-deserved. All right, guys, we are off the bus, and it is approaching the favorite time of the day, which is dinner time. That means we're gonna be exploring some new 
Korean dishes. So I'm gonna hit up a place now called Gwangjang Market, famous Korean street food market, actually featured on Netflix, <laughs> and uh, probably eat my way through there. Come along. All right, guys, nothing like going into a back alley in a country where you don't speak the local language. <laughs> Here we go, wish me luck. All right, guys, I think I found it. <laughs> wow. So I made it inside the market. And if you're curious about the show that I mentioned, there is this show on Netflix called Asian Street Food. And the episode I'm referring to is called Korean Street Food. And they're highlighting a stall in here, which I plan to eat at today if I can get a space. That was good. I did myself a favor and only ordered one dish because look, there is so many stalls. So I'm thinking to try one more before we head home. Moon bean pancake. It's actually huge. I had to pack the other one into the sack, but let's try it. It's been a very long day for me. I woke up at 5 a.m. and tomorrow I'm gonna wake up at 4 a.m. So we're doing something fun tomorrow too, but I wanted to end this segment with seeing how inspiring it is to see how Koreans live. Very nice. The city is very green, full of trees. People seem to like really enjoy themselves and recreational areas, trash cans everywhere, subway system that's amazing. I mean, this is a great city in Asia and I'm realizing that I'm kind of getting used to living in Asia at this point. So I live full time in Manila, if you didn't know, just stumbled upon this video. So I live in the Philippines, which is also a very nice city, but very different from Korea, obviously. So it's fun to see how easy it is for me to blend in in Asia now. Like I think I've come a long way on that journey and proud of myself for that. Obviously it isn't easy going from a Nordic culture <laughs> in Scandinavia to all of a sudden living in Asia. It's a big contrast. It's not often I meet other Norwegians on the road. So, little pep talk there. See you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, you're looking at a man who had had two hours beauty sleep on this high-speed train going to Busan. So I arrived here this morning, booked another tour. Somebody told me that when you're coming to Korea, you should visit Busan. It's very, fairly easy, you jump on the train in Seoul. Two hours and ten minute high-speed train. And this is a coastal city. I'm very excited to be here. And we're going to be going on a full day trip around. They're going to be exciting. Come along. We made it. We are currently in Busan. This is the tallest building here. Huge. <laughs> Super cool when there's like a skyscraper so close to the ocean. Now we're gonna take something called a sky capsule, which is very popular here. Hey guys, I'm now on the first part of today's trip here in Busan and we're taking something called the Sky Train, which takes you along the coast and takes about 30 minutes and you get to explore a lot of different things. And I think at the end, there's also an option to eat something. So we are now walking on the pier like this. This pier actually goes all the way from Busan, all the way out here. It's nice to feel the ocean breeze a little bit. Quite chilly, I actually think it's perfect temperature with a t-shirt and a jacket. So keep that in mind if you're coming on this trip. Heading out on the skywalk, you need to wear these funky shoe covers probably to protect it. From here you can see all of Busan. I figured out the reason why we need to wear this so we don't damage the glass. It's a really, really good thing. Guys, I have a question for you. So normally like I travel with my wife full time and I find solo traveling kind of hard because there's no one there to like immediately share the moment with. Like there's people, yeah, you can go on trips like this and kind of make a friend for a day, but it's hard. So I was curious how you guys feel about that. Are you a solo traveler or do you like to travel in groups? If you have any like anything you can share about this topic, I think it would be great for people in this video because this is a video about solo traveling, and I think I'd love to hear you guys' uh, ideas and comments on that subject. Any tips for how you normally make friends while solo traveling? That would be good to know. <laughs> this is very new to me. Lunchtime, you guys. Seafood restaurant. Wow.
So apparently this path right here takes you two hours to complete and it goes all the way into Busan. And there's people jogging it, biking it, running it. Good public offer. If I had more time, I think I would do it. And like along the way, there's breathtaking views. It goes along the coastline. I think Busan is definitely a place you should consider staying more than just one day like I'm doing. Still, if you have the time, it's worth to just go for a day. We are now in a place called the Cultural Village. A lot of cafes and good views. Finally sat down at a cafe. There's a lot of walking here in this village, but it's beautiful. I mean, there's a lot of different colorful spots to take photos around. It's cool to be so immersed in the culture. Korean dessert, pat bing soup. It's like a shaved ice with a lot of fruits. Let's try it. So we are now at Gamcheon Cultural Village, a place left over actually after the Korean War. Uh, there were some poor people living here and they just kind of never managed to relocate them. So instead of trying to relocate them, they actually came in and revamped the place, made it a colorful, beautiful place, spent a lot of money on arts and did it that way. So today it's a very successful project and a very big tourist destination. This place is huge, look at that. Kind of reminds me of that city in Baguio in the Philippines or a favela in Brazil, but you can still go in, it's safe. Okay guys, we're back at Busan station where we started this morning. It was an awesome day, back and forth. I'm gonna jump on my express train back to Seoul. It's gonna take about two hours, so it's a full day for me today. But I would say this trip was worth it. And if you wanna book the tickets going here, I actually had to do that separately from Klook, but I did it through something called Rail Ninja. So that was very, very convenient. And then I got my entire itinerary trip that we did today with the guide and everything on the Klook website. Again, I'll link everything that I've done in the description of the video so it's easy for you to book it. Back to Seoul and tomorrow in the video, we're gonna be exploring Seoul, which I'm so excited for. I'm gonna be uh, walking around, checking out the palace and I'm gonna dress up in traditional Korean attire. So if you wanna see that, stick along. And good morning everyone. It is my last day in South Korea. Very sad. I've had such a great time and I think I'd save the best for last. Today we're gonna explore the palace. So the trip we have booked for today using the Klook app is Hanbok Experience. All right. Hanbok is what the, the Koreans call their traditional atir. In Norway, we call it bunat. In Tagalog, you have like the barong. And so here, you see that Hanbok experience. So it's very easy. They provided me a map here. I just click that, click go, open in Google Maps. Actually, in Korea, they do recommend you another app, but I find that Google Maps work kind of, so I'm using that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the subway. So we're gonna walk over to the subway and then catch it over to the palace. It's time to get dressed up. They helped me with everything. Picked it out, I told them I don't know anything. So they recommended me navy blue, and I actually think that's a good idea. Make my skin color pop a little bit, and you know, they'll help you with everything. So now we're gonna get dressed, and hopefully get some cool photos at the palace. All right, we are now inside the palace grounds. And if you're wearing a traditional hanbok, like this, you don't need any ticket, so you don't even need to line up. You can just walk straight to the main gate and free admission. I love it when it's free. No, that's great. Two things, or a little tip for you guys. The handbook does not have any pockets, so I wish I would have brought uh, a smaller bag. I'm kind of forced to bring a bag to have all my items in it. A little tip for you, but hey, we're here. I'm gonna go in and uh, I was told that the exact handbook that I am wearing is more common among government officials. You yeah, know, I feel like that suits me. Yeah, I think that suits me. All right. 
Alright guys, after visiting the palace, it's time for lunch and my wife helped me discover this very nice place in Bukchon village. It's an Italian inspired restaurant inside an old traditional house. Bukchon village is full of these places and now I'm gonna be able to eat inside one of these. Italian food is also one of my favorites and I'm thinking with a little bit of Korean twist, it might just be the best meal ever. Guys, that lunch place was absolutely amazing. It was $35 for one person for two dishes and a glass of wine. But you know, if my wife was here, I'm pretty sure we could have shared that because I'm feeling very full. But it's such a lovely lady. It's her house and she's kind of like cooking from there. It wasn't easy to find it. Like I walked up here and then it was like through this alley and at the end. Um, I'll try to link it. So on Google Maps, you might be able to find it, but like, what you should look for is that sign all the way through the alley, all the way to the end, to that sign. Now that we're feeling full and a little bit of good spirits in the blood, it's time that we explore the village. You say I should journal every day, but I don't. Center of Bukchon village, famous for its architecture, close to the palace that we visited earlier this morning. Okay, so from traditional houses to modern design, we are here at the Dong Diomum Design Plaza. I don't know if I said it right, but uh, this is a place you just have to visit when you're in South Korea. It's a place where you can get very special modern photo. Architecture is almost like brutalism, large concrete slabs. Honestly, it's a pleasant change to the traditional stuff we've been doing today. Let's see what's around here. Guys, my hotel is there. And then check out, I'm right in the heart of Myeongdong. There's just so much to eat here and see. Like, look at this. Street vendors everywhere. Wow. Squid, wow. All different forms of squid. It's super hectic here at night, actually. Almost too much, but it's nice to be in the heart of it. So you can just leave your hotel room and find everything right at the doorstep. As much as I really want to buy some street food, what I really want to do while I'm in Korea is Korean barbecue. So I'm going to find a spot for that. All right, here's a real view into what it's like to walk the streets at night. It's a lot of cars, a lot of taxis, and a lot of people, but also a lot of food. So the Korean barbecue place that we're going to try is right down here. And when I'm navigating the streets, I'm literally just using Google Maps. Can you guys see? I'm approaching it. I'm the blue dot. We're almost there. Do you guys see? Usually they will put the image of the entrance. And so let's compare it. Yeah, that looks like that's the right one. Absolutely KO, man. That was really, really good. But I'm so full. Time to get some sleep before flying home tomorrow. Bye, so we're about to catch the airport express train back to Ichehon International Airport. 
So, just get our tickets from Cloak and be on our way. Take the train, you just scan this at the train ticket machines over there. And then you get a second train ticket, which looks like this. And that's pretty much all you need. So when I fly from a country, I try to book it a little bit after noon. So my flight today is 12.50. It's just because I don't like waking up super early, being stressed. I just like to take my time. And for example, there's always things that you don't know. I didn't know that this train only leaves like every 40 minutes. Now, luckily I'm out, I have a good time. So it doesn't matter. Train leaves in about 30 minutes from now. So I'm just gonna chill at the platform and make sure I'll be on my way. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think I'm gonna end it right here and be on my way back to Manila. If you are looking to travel to other destinations in the world, my YouTube channel is full of different videos. I think I have something like 800 videos from all over the world right now. And uh, my favorite destinations, obviously, all on there. I created a playlist which I called my favorite uh, travel places so it's on there. Leave a comment if you think there's anything I missed here in Seoul. It definitely won't be my last time visiting this place. It was very very beautiful and I hope to be back soon. Thanks for watching guys. See you on the next travel. Okay.